family that has traveled all the way from West Virginia to be with you. So thank you for your heart. Thank you for showing up on a weekday, changing your schedules, changing your work, changing your school, getting up at four in the morning, whatever it took to be here, and give some love to the Bevins family from West Virginia. Hello, my name is Nancy Bevins, and as she said, we came from West Virginia. There's a less talked about risk in fracking circles. It is an aspect that many ignore. After all, no one is forced to put on a hard hat just as no one is forced to sign a lease with a gas company. But if the industry can lie to and deceive a landowner, couldn't they just as easily lie to and deceive an employee? Or worse, poison, endanger, and threaten them, even injure and kill them. On May 1st, 2011, my son and his co-workers were hurriedly erecting a drill site in Smyrna, New York. The site was extremely hazardous. All-wheel drive vehicles were sinking in the mud and ruts were thigh and even waist deep. Supervisors requested then demanded more mats to cover the work area, but the company answered that they were too expensive and pushed the workers to continue. As a result, Charles Edward Bevins III, my sweet boy, was pinned and crushed between an industrial-sized forklift and a building when the weight of the forklift on the unstable ground gave way. The remote hidden location which affords so many drilling sites less scrutiny was not mutually beneficial to my son. The sprint to the Syracuse hospital took over an hour. I'm told the last thing his co-workers heard him say was, am I gonna die? My only son, 23 years old, died repeatedly until the doctor could no longer revive him. My only son died with no family or friends at his side to hold him and comfort him. Every single night when I go to bed, my thoughts are haunted with what his last thoughts were, how scared he was and the pain he was in. When my son's body was brought back home, we buried him on our property. After keeping him at home one last night, he went into our soil where he had grown up the last 14 years of his life. We buried him among the trees he had cut and planted, the fences he strung and repaired, and the sheep he trimmed and fed overlooked from the meadow. Our family dogs lay quietly among us as we said goodbye and filled the grave with earth. He was supposed to grow old in the house that he helped build, not be buried in the woods, a stone throw that from the black door, back door. In the 17 months following the loss of our son, our eyes have been opened to the substantial amount of injuries and deaths caused by this dangerous industry. We read more and more articles about rig workers injured and killed by electrocutions, explosions, and traffic accidents. Our research also unveiled the unregulated, inhumane hours they are forced to work and the unsafe environment they are subjected to. After speaking with his co-workers, it became apparent that the all the regulations in the world would never make drilling safe. This is an industry known for cutting corners, racing against public opinion, and ignoring scientific evidence. There were five violations the day my brother was killed. They violated five, five regulations that were put in place. The guy driving the forklift had no training on the forklift. The forklift on the site was not the correct forklift for that type of terrain. They were re requested these mats and they were told they were too expensive. The bottom line is that they're a sick, corrupted industry and they cannot be trusted. Look at their track record. We need to push on into the future away from this industry, away from crude oil, away from natural gas. Our yeah. infrastructure is built on natural gas, or is built on oil now, and they're continuing to open up to natural gas, but we need to stop it before it gets any further. Stop it! The 